Hi there. Welcome to Automate with Autocrat with me, Jen Giffen. I am Jen. I, I can be found on social media at Virtual Giff. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm coming to you from just north of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I am a teacher librarian, an ed tech specialist, a podcaster, a sketch noter, a Google uh, education educator, innovator, trainer, and of course, a proud shakeup learning trainer. And I'm really excited to be here with you today to show you how you can automate um, your processes to make your life a little bit easier. You can get the slides for this slide deck at bit.ly forward slash gif sul automate. And once you get in there, you know, the link is all there and et cetera, et cetera. Before we start anything, I want you to see the magic of Autocrat and what it can do for you. So I would like you to head on over to bit.ly forward slash GIF Autocrat form and fill out the form that you will get there. It's really short. I'll show you. I'll open it up here in another window. Just tell me a little bit about yourself, your name, your email, you know, the event, Shake Up Learning Back to School Conference, today's date, what your role is in education and the things that you're hoping to automate. That's all I'm looking for. And then just hit that little submit button and we'll be good to go. Okay. So what is Autocrat? Some of you might be here thinking like, okay, this is great. I like the idea of automation and what we can do. Like, what is it? It's a merge tool. And it allows you to take data from a spreadsheet that's either pre-populated or one that populates through a Google form, like the one you just filled out, and merge it into documents or slides. Uh, basically, you have merge tags, which are these little tags you can see there on the screen with the like double Pac-Man brackets, as I call them. And it allows you to mass personalize documents. Really cool, right? Instead of typing everything out, this will do all that heavy lifting for you. And it can be done manually or automatically, right? It can be done in real time as people, for, for example, fill out a form or once you have a whole bunch of information collected. And we're going to walk through all of that. So I've used this for um, lesson plans, certificates, running records, uh, motivational posters, student profiles I do at the beginning of every year. Um, I don't really love reading off spreadsheets. I'd rather see it in an actual document. And that's why I think Autocrat is amazing, especially for that relationship and community building in education. Okay, here's the thing. Those may have been a lot of big words and you might sort of be feeling like, oh gosh, I don't know. I don't know if this is the thing for me. Let me tell you this. If you can make a Google form and you can put some information into a Google Doc or a Google Slide and you can press those greater than, less than, Pac-Man signs, right? If you can do those, you can do Autocrad. Heavy lifting, made easy. Just like my little bit emoji there. Okay, so what does it look like? What does it look like? You may now be like, okay, I sort of get it, but I, I can't really see it. So you might have something like this. Okay, this is uh, an, uh, an event form that we filled out at my old school. So we had students and, and teacher um, advisors fill out a Google form and we would want to know, you know, the event, the date that they were requesting, the focus based on our school priorities, the dates, the times, the staff advisor, what it was about, all this information. So they would fill out that form and rather than us going to that spreadsheet and reading it off, Autocrat would automatically turn it into this. It would take all the information and put it into our form because we had it set up that way. Hey, um, there's also this. I did this with a school once where we set up referral sheets to the office. So um, teachers, let's say at recess, let's say there was an incident with some students. Instead of going in and needing to be like, oh, this is what's going on and this is what happened and, and take up time during valuable prep time or lunch time or away from the students during instructional time, they would just fill out a Google form that all, all teachers had and all educators in the building had access to. And it would turn from something like this into something like this. Right, all filled out beautifully for you. All those colors are there and you can do that. You can also do paperless tests. So here in Ontario, we have the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test for the 10th graders, right? And we have one that we do as a practice test in Google Forms. And then it's taken to a committee of volunteer teachers who, you know, assess it and look at which students might require extra support. Well, that's great. But again, we don't want to read off a spreadsheet. So when you attach it with Autocrat, once a student fills everything out on the Google form, which I love now, now just recently in the last couple of weeks, we can now have progress saved. So it's not like one and done kind of stuff. Amazing. <laughs> so what happens now is a student will fill out, you know, everything in the Google form and boom, it turns into something like this. So now it's easier for the teachers who are assessing it to grade and there's not a whole bunch of cut and paste happening. 
So what I want you to do in the time that I have, you know, been talking to you, you filled out that form back on, you know, the slide uh, earlier in the presentation. I want you to go and check the email address that you provided in that form. So maybe your school or your personal address. Just go in there. Go in there and, and, and see what's happening. I'll give, I'll give you a minute. I'll, just, I'll sit here and wait. I'm talking in another, you know, window to you. And you're going into your email and you see there's something, hey, there's something there from Jen Giffen. How, how did that happen that Jen Giffen, she's sitting here? Well, this is a recording, so I'm not really sitting here. And it's not like I'm sitting like every moment of my day, you know, filling out information that's being emailed into me. You probably received a, so sorry, you probably received a, or you should have received a certificate. Just really basic, you know, my Bitmoji's there with my short hair. That's my short hair Bitmoji. And just saying, hey, you're learning outside the bells. Way to go. And you have this little certificate that I've created. I've done nothing. I actually set all that up, mm, I'm going to say four years ago. Yeah, maybe three, but probably four years ago. So that every time anyone fills out that form, this is created for them. Pretty cool, right? Now, if there's a spelling mistake and you feel like, oh, I didn't really want that, you can go ahead and fill that form again. You can fill it out and you can get a new one. It's awesome. Okay. And I actually even have a copy of all of those in my drive to see who's been there that I can um, create and, and use and amend if we needed to do that. So for example, if you were doing this with littles and they're like, oh, I put my name wrong because I didn't use capital letters, right? What happens? You can go in as the teacher and change that for them if you wanted to. Tons of um, ability to be really flexible here, which is awesome. So how does it work? First of all, you have a form, but you'll notice that there's like a grayed out arrow. So you don't need to use a form. All you actually need is a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet that's usually attached to the form, if you want, you link that with the add-on called Autocrat. That looks like those little arrows there in the yellow box. Then you have a template made in either Google Docs or Google Slides. And then from that, it pushes to an either Google Slides, Google Doc, or PDF, in case you don't want people to do any kind of um, uh, like alterations, right? And then it goes into a Google folder. And then if you choose, it can be mailed out to people. Doesn't have to be. But again, that little like sort of gray arrow, maybe it gets mailed out to people. That's the process. So these are all tools in the Google suite that we use pretty regularly. So let's get cracking. I'm going to walk through this with you. Feel free to, as you watch, pause or have this on another screen and go along or watch the whole thing and then do whatever suits you for the way that you learn. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a folder. Okay, I like to put everything in a single folder. I just find that it makes my life a whole lot easier. So in this slide deck, you'll notice that after every one of those title slides, I do have what I'm doing. I won't put these on screen for very long, so don't panic because I'm going to walk you through it but I have it written out in the slide deck so that if you don't want to have to rewatch the whole video, you can just see it in writing. So I'm going to head on over to my Google Drive here. Going into my Google Drive and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this my Autocrat Certificates. And you're going to call it whatever it is that you want to automate. Those incident reports, it can be um, event requests, it can be... Uh, Report cards, if you want to do that, whatever you want. I've, I've done this with report cards with an international school. It worked really well. So I'm going to create that folder. And now you will see it is right there. Beautiful. So that's step one. Okay. I'm just going to go into Google Drive and create that. Within that folder now, because I'm going to put everything together so I can find it. Again, this is me. If, if you don't organize like I do, step one is kind of optional, I guess. For step two, you are going to create a form. So back here in this folder, you want to make sure you're in the folder. I'm going to go to new and I'm going to go to forms and I'm going to click that and it's going to open a Google form for me. So I'm going to create this um, as a certificate. I, I like the certificate aspect of things. This is what, um, what sort of works for me. So I'm going to call this... Um, the you did great certificate. And let's say I'm, oops, sorry about that. You did great certificate. So the first question I might ask, because I'm going to put this in the certificate, is the student's name, right? I want to know the name. I might put the date, okay? And you'll notice that it will automatically, through the gremlins in my computer, 
um, know that that is going to be a date. So it'll change the field. Now, if I, if I want to in- enter it manually, I can, of course, change this. The other thing you're going to want to do is make these required. Because if you don't make them required, when you go to fill out the form, if you miss one of the fields, the merge fields, right, the little tags, remember those things in those Pac-Man brackets? They'll just be blank with those merge tags and it will look silly. So you want to make sure that everything gets filled out. So name, um, date, and what you did. Okay, that's it. It's just going to be a very simple little form for me. Okay, very simple because that's all I need. I'm going to create a certificate that would have like, you know, Jen Giffen on August the 31st shared with her class or participated actively in the lesson, whatever it happens to be. So here I go. I'm like, okay, this is great. Fantastic. Now, the other thing I might choose to do in this case that you probably want to do is put in an email address. Now, this email address is should you choose to have it emailed to people like I emailed you your certificate, you're going to need that. If you're doing this as a teacher and you're going to do like monthly awards and you fill this out every day, let's say, and then you print them out yourself, you may not need to do this step. But if you want them to be created individually and sent to the student and maybe like you CC the parents on this. Oh, so you can do that. So I might even do that like parent email so that the parent also gets um, a copy of this, right? The parent or maybe just a guardian because not all of our students, as we know, have um, that sort of traditional parent email. child relationship. We're looking for the caring adult in that student's life. Okay, so here we go. There, that's it. I'm going to name it. Pretty simple. If I need to make any changes to this, I can go back later, but I have this created. All right. So like I said, you are going to create that form in that folder. You don't need the form. If you want to just put everything into a spreadsheet and create it that way, that's fine. I just like to do the form. Step three is to create the Google Sheet. So if you've done the form, you're just going to create a Google Sheet from the Google form. If you haven't done a form, then you're just going to create a new blank Google Sheet in the folder we created back in step one. So to do this, I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to responses. I'm back on that you did great certificate form. And I want to click the little icon here that looks like the Google Sheets logo. And this will create the spreadsheet. And it's going to say, hey, you want to create a new one called You Did Great Certificate Responses? And I'm like, yep, sounds good. I can add it to an existing, but I don't want to do that here. I'm going to click the Create button. And we're going to get a new folder open. Sorry, a new um, tab, rather, not folder, open. That'll have all of my information. Okay, great. So I have my folder. I have my form. I have my spreadsheet. What's next? Well, the next thing you want to do is create the template. Okay, we're going to create the template. And what that means is if we think back to the very beginning where we had, you know, the the template that showed like all those Pac-Man brackets where we would fill in the information. This is where all the information will go once you've collected it. Okay, this is that document that'll make all your, your spreadsheet look a whole lot prettier. So I'm going to, again, go back into the folder we've created in step one. Okay. And I'm going to create either a Google Doc or a Google Slide to put this information in. It will work with both, um, but you just need to choose which one you want. So because I'm creating a certificate, I'm going to do it as a Google Slide. Here I am, Google Slides. I'm going to call this the You Did Great Certificate. And I'll know the difference, of course, between the two of them, because in my Google Drive, one will have the icon for slides and one will have the um, icon for forms. So you did great certificate. So at this point, I can design what this certificate is going to look like. Now, I can go from scratch. Or if you find a template online, you want to use something like Slides Mania, which I adore, slidesmania.com, or any of those pre-made templates for slide decks, go ahead and feel free to do that. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, right? So in here, I might just put, you know, I'm going to put a shape here of like a square. I'm actually going to change this altogether into a um, blank layout so I don't have anything on it. And then I might make this square 
have a really thick border and I might make the border a nice like blue color and the inside can be transparent. So I have like that outline and let's make sure that it's centered. There we go. And then I'm going to maybe duplicate this and do a little like red border. It's not so thick to the inside of this and again I'm going to center that okay here we go so there I have I have a little bit of a border that's cool and then then I now I just play right I'm like oh how do I want it to look oh that's a bit too wide there we go there we go and then I might want to choose to put something like a, like a high five in here right because it's you did great so I'll go to insert and I'm going to look up images, search from the web, and I'm going to search high five. Let's see, Let's see what I get here. Oh, beautiful. I have a whole bunch of things here. Oh, I kind of like all these. I, I, I want something more like clip art, though. So I'm going to choose clip art. Oh, like the high fives of the high fives. Amazing. Those sort of look like hands to me. Hmm. Okay. You know what? I'm going to use this little icon here. So I'll insert that. It's going to be very big. I might put it in the corner here. And again, at this point, you're going to be designing whatever it is that you want. Um, if you're doing a Google Doc, you probably don't, don't need to have all these visual features. And the reason I choose to demo a Google slide in this is because I really want you to see um, that you can make them sort of pretty. A Google Doc tends to be a little more sort of, you know, maybe a chart with some colors, but that's about it. Okay, so now, now I'm going to put in a text box, maybe right here. And in this text box, I'm going to put my double Pac-Man brackets. See what I did there? I'm gonna do it more slowly. I'm going to put the, what's that then? The, yeah, greater than, greater than, and then I'm gonna write name less than, less than, because this is where the name will be drawn from that name question on the Google form. To make your life really easy, I'm going to head back to the Google form, have it match exactly. So notice I have a capital N there. That's important. It, you don't need it, but it does make your life a little bit easier in a little bit. So I'm going to make this bigger. And at this point, whatever font I want, I need to, I need to indicate that right now because it will, once I have it, I can't, I can't change it once I've created the document unless I recreate it. So make sure your formatting is exactly how you want it. Okay, so I'm going to have name, and then I'm going to maybe create a second folder, or second field here. You did great. And... I'll put that like that. Now, this isn't, of course, something that's like really fancy at this point. I'm just doing it quickly for us to get through. I might make this really a lot smaller now. So I might go down to 30 and then change it to like an open sans. You did great. Today, and then I'm going to say like today you, and then leave a space. And again, I'm going to make those brackets and say on here, what did I see? What you did. What you did is what I'm going to put in this field. Because again, we need to match it directly. So when I fill this out, it would say, Jen Giffen, you did great. Today you, and then it would fill in whatever I wrote in this field that says what you did. Now, at this point, when I'm filling this out through the year, I might forget what the certificate looks like. And grammatically, I want it to be correct. So what I like to do is go to these three dots and put description. And write the today you dot dot dot. Okay, I have today you and I have that. Oh, I just realized that I didn't make these mandatory, but that's okay um, because I may not mail them to people. Today you so that I make sure that I put what they did starting with today you. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to change and you'll notice that I, I do jump back and forth as I create this because as I create, you know, my certificate, I might realize, oh, I need this information as well on the, um, on the form. So that's okay that you're jumping around. It's good to have an, have everything open. 
I'm also going to change this to paragraph in case I want to write a little bit more. And I'm going to come in here. And you know what? I might make this a little bit smaller again because they might, they might have done a lot. And the last thing that's on my form is, I believe, the date. Yes, the date. So I'm going to come here again. I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to put the date up here in the corner. I'm going to write justify it. And I'm just going to take all this out because all I need are those merge fields. That's what those are called there. And the date. And again, this doesn't need to be super big. So let's do that. So good. When I fill this out, it'll say their name. You did great. Today you. I might make this, you know, again, you can play with this to make it as pretty as you want. But in the interest of time here, I don't, I don't I'm not going to make something super you know, amazing because time. Uh, the only thing I might do is now change this color. It's good. Okay. Yay. You did great. Beautiful. We have this all done. Awesome. Awesome. This is where we're at. So I have my form. I have my spreadsheet. I have my certificate, which don't forget to name it. So I'm going to call this you did great certificate. And I'm going to call this the template. Okay. The template. Because this is the one that they get, they get populated to. Okay. Now from here, what do we need to do next? Okay. Like I said, like I showed you, you have those, you know, the name, the merge fields, they're in the chevrons or the Pac-Mans or the greater than less than, um, copy questions verbatim I've said. So now we need to install AutoCrowd. We have all of our pieces ready. We now need the auto magical stuff that goes on in the background with this add on. So you get this by going to the G Suite marketplace and downloading the AutoCrowd sheets add on. And that's all you look for. So you can click here to get that. And it's on slide. What slide are we on here? 26 in the slide deck if you're following along. If not, if you just search Autocrat Sheets add-on in Google, it will get you there. So we come here. And here we go. The Google Workspace Marketplace. And I'm going to click Install. And at this point, it says, okay, you're re you ready to install. We need some permissions. And you hit Continue. Your other option is to go right into your Google Sheet. And under add-ons, you can say get add-ons. So if you don't want to do that search, you can do it this way. And you'll notice Autocrat will likely be one of the first ones. It's had, as you can see, over 10 million downloads, like used a ton. Um, there's other ones here too that work in a similar way. Autocrat just happens to be my favorite. So I'm going to click that. And we're going to hit install. And it's going to ask me to, you know, log in with my account. So I say, yep, here I am, Janet, shakeuplearning.com. And then it gives you, these are the permissions that it grants. Uh, New Visions Cloud Lab, who created this, has no access to your files. It's just, it allows the script in the background to run to give that extra um, little bit of juice to uh, the, the sheet. So we're going to click allow. And then it says, okay, good. We're ready. Beautiful. Autocrat has been installed and it'll say, yeah, if you go to add-ons, you should see it there. Great. I'll click done. I can close this off. And now did they lie? No, they didn't. There's Autocrat. Hooray, hooray, hooray. So Autocrat has been installed. Beautiful. And the steps are here on how to do that. So now we need to set up Autocrat. And this is where multiple steps are. And the first time you do it, you're like, okay, there's a lot of things. It's all laid out here in the slide deck for you. And the more you do this, the more you use Autocrat the more intuitive it becomes. So the first step is to open Autocrat. And in order to do that, you just go to add-ons Autocrat and then hit launch. So I'm going to come back to my, my sheet. That's where this is. It's on the sheet, not the form. I'm going to go to add-ons, Autocrat. And it's not loading properly. So I'm just going to refresh because sometimes it takes a minute for it to load in the background. Okay, so once again, I'm going to go to add-ons. I'm going to go to Autocrat, and now you see. Now, you'll see it says open. I have in my instructions, it says launch. I find with some people it says launch, and some it says open. I'm not totally sure. I think um, they probably changed some of the script in the background for their menus, and some depending on what version you have, it's going to say open or launch. So we'll go to open here, and it's going to open up the program. Okay, we're going to see a... Um, a box like this pop up and here it is. 
So to set up a job, you're going to simply click new job. And we're going to name the job. This is step one. Okay. And we're going to go through all of this here. So once you have that, you're going to select new job. Step one, name your job. Here's the thing. You can name your job anything you want. It's just for your reference. But if you run many jobs on the same sheet, it can become useful. So for example, I ran a conference once where we needed to send um, information to presenters and we had all the presenter information on one spreadsheet. So we called, you know, one um, our like the uh, welcome to the conference and that filled out that job. And then at the end of the conference, we had thanks for participating. And then that filled out with that job because we pulled all the information from the same sheet. So in your case, you know, if you're only running one job on a sheet, the name isn't so important. So I'm just going to call mine certificates because that's what I'm creating certificates. And then I'm going to click next. Then we get to stage two, which is choose your template. And this is where all the information on that spreadsheet is going to populate. So you'll remember the template is the document that has your merge tags, right? With the chevrons, the greater than, less than, the Pac-Mans, and it'll be filled in based on the data on, on the spreadsheet. So you can choose to use something from your drive or something recently picked. Well, we just created something. And the beautiful thing is we say, okay, yeah, from your drive, let's go. I'll say, okay, I'm going to look for something. And it's going to list documents in a reverse chronological order. So you'll see the last thing that I was in is the spreadsheet, but then, hey, look, there's my template, right? There is the um, the sheet, or sorry, the slide that I created. So I'm going to select that, and it's going to take a minute. It's going to think, and it says fetching the tags, and those tags, of course, are little things in those brackets. And it fetches that, and it takes sometimes a minute, and it like, looks through, and it's like, hey, okay, what's here? What do I need to match? So while it fetches, we will look... Um, at what we did there. So we're going to pick from drive. You're going to select what it is that you, which um, template you want and then select. And then we'll move on to step three. So once it fetches all those tags, we're going to map the source data. All that means is you're going to say for those tags that you have on your template, which question on your form matches. That's all you're doing is matching them. And if you've matched them perfectly, okay, if you have the exact same um, punctuation, capitalization, and that they should match automatically or auto magically. So we'll click next from step two and go on to mapping the merge data. And sure enough, I had three things, name, it's there, what you did, what you did, and the date. If they are blank, you can choose something else here. You can choose another um, thing from the drop down, or if it's matched to the wrong one. You will notice that you cannot have, you cannot have any questions on your form that are identical because it will confuse the program. So let's say you want to have email, two different emails, put email one and email two or parent email, student email, things like that, because otherwise the program won't run properly. It'll have a little bit of a, a fit and it'll say, no, I'm not going to work because I'm, I'm confused. All right. So we go on to next number four. Step four is, oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, sorry. This is, I'm glad I have this. One thing you'll notice at the top of step three is some, it says, which merge tab do you want to use? So if you pop it up and it's like completely blank, it might be that you're on the wrong tab. So you'll see form response one is what was picked here. If you were trying to get something from another tab, so if you had multiple tabs on this sheet, or they call them sheets, not tabs, but that's confusing a sheet within a sheet. If you have multiple, um, you need to make sure you pick the right one. So that's, that's one thing that I have here. Okay. And then, of course, you are going to um, list everything or, or match everything. If you have unmapped tags, it won't let you move on to next. And it will say at the top how many tags are unmapped. This is particularly helpful if you have a really long form or if you're doing something in a doc that has a lot of fields to match up to. Right. My certificate is pretty simple. Um, but like I said, that conference that I ran, we had like something like 40 different merge tags in the document we were creating. So it was really helpful to know how many I had left. Um, so I could quickly scroll down and find those. Okay, next, we are going to set the file settings. Well, what does this mean? This is where you'll determine how each document created is named. So you can use your merge tags by pulling out that little, I call it the blue drawer on the side. So look what I do here in this animated GIF. I click that little blue thing, it pulls it out, and those are all the tags listed that are in the document, or sorry, that are in the form. And all that means is it's the headers, right? If you go into my Google Sheet here, 
Timestamp is one of them. Name will be one of them. See, I pull these out. Those are all of the questions on my form that become the columns in my sheet. So what do I want to name it? I want to name it name. So I'm going to click it to copy it to my, um, my clipboard. And then I'm going to paste it. I use control V. Um, I'm going to call it name. So it would be like Jen Giffen. You did great. And then maybe I want the date. Now, you don't want to just name it like you did great certificate because then when they're saved in your drive, you won't know who it's for. So I always like to associate that name with it. Do I want to create it as a Google slide or a PDF? In this case, because they're just coming into my drive, this is where I always save them as a as the um, file that they actually are. And now I can have it as multiple output modes, meaning every time every row of that spreadsheet gets its own file. But if you're doing a mass production, let's say you just want like certificates for May for your whole class um, and you're not going to be emailing them, you're going to be handing them out maybe in class or something like that. Then you might choose single output mode because it puts it all into one large file instead of having to open multiple and then print them if that's what you're choosing to do. Okie dokie. And I think I have something on that here. Um, yep, we talk about each of those. So the next thing you want to do is choose your destination folder. Now, before we do this, I'm going to go back into that folder I created way back in step one. And I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call it student certificates. Because I don't want all of my certificates in with my templates and all my master stuff. I want them in their own um, folder. Why? Because I'm really particular about how I organize my Google Drive. So you don't need to do this. If you're fine having them all in there, that's fine. But I like the subfolder myself. This is an optional step. So. I'm back here and I say, okay, great. I'm going to go to next. And where do I want them? Do I want them there? And I say, no, I don't. So I can hover over this and click the trash can. So do you want to remove it? Yeah. And then I can choose a new folder. And that new folder is called student certificates. Again, listed in reverse chronological order. Select that one. Good to go. Click next to take us to step six. Now I'll tell you this. Okay, that's all there for you for step five. Step six is adding a dynamic folder reference. This is optional. I'm not even going to explain this because it is rarely used by most teachers. It's really geeky. Um, it can be used for separating, separating responses uh, for specific classes or teachers or times. Or I, I did this once. Um, it was a, a single form for an admin team and they each wanted to use the same form, but they wanted to go into their own folders. The only time I've ever set it up with uh, groups like that. If you want to learn how to do that, if you're like, yeah, I need that. If you're like leveling up, check out Jenny Conrad's video here embedded on slide 46. It'll explain how to do that. So if you don't want to do that, no problem. You're going to be like me. We're just going to skip it. Okay, we're not going to do anything here. We're not going to click anything. We're just going to go to next. So then we're going to set our merge conditions. And again, in this case, I don't have any merge conditions. It's optional. But this step allows you to um, create these certificates or your documents based on some conditions but not others. So for example, if you're doing something and you only want it to be created for students who are listed as gifted, if that's one of your questions, like if you have an exceptionality and yeah, giftedness, it's only going to create for that. Or if you only want it for fourth graders, or you only want it for um, students in um, Mrs. Bell's class, right? Those are the sorts of things that you might use the um, merge conditions for. If you want it for everyone all the time, then we're going to skip this step as well. And we're going to move on to step number eight. So I'm going to skip this. And in step number eight, you can choose to share the documents or send emails. This is if you want it sent like I did at the beginning for you directly to the people who filled out your form or who are in your database. Like I did with the conference that we um, that we did. We wanted to send everything out because I didn't work with them on the daily or I didn't see them on the daily. So I'm going to say yes here. And I can share it with them as an editable doc, a view only, a comment only, anyone can have the link. And, or what I like to choose here is a PDF. So if I'm sending this to my students, I don't want them to be able to go in and manipulate what I wrote. I want them just to get a PDF that they might want to print out and hang somewhere or, or save in a folder that they're really proud of. You can say if they reshare this or not. You can send it from a ge uh, generic no reply address. This is really good if you're creating things that you don't want, like on behalf of your entire school, and you don't want to get all the things back. Hey, the name is wrong, and you want to maybe go to the office or something. You can just hit like no reply, and you just type that no dash reply, and it um, it won't email to you. Otherwise, you are going, to, if you send it out, if they hit that reply button, it's going to come to you or whoever you put here. 
Okay, so I am going to say this is going to go to, again, I'm going to use that magic drawer and I'm going to say it's going to go to the student and I'm going to CC the parent. And I want to reply to Jen at shakeuplearning.com, right? And now my subject might be way to go. And again, in here I can use my tags and I can say, hey, and I can just write them in if I want to. It's always recommended to use that blue drawer because then they're an exact match. Because if you if I put name and I had a spelling error, everyone would get, hey, name with the chevrons and it would look silly. So, hey, name, um, I saw what you did and I am proud of you. Check out the attached PDF certificate. Okay. Oh, and I'm going to make sure that I have all my spelling right. And then I'm just going to write Mrs. Giffen. Beautiful. And that's all I need to do here. So as a quick recap, an optional step, you can um, choose what kind of file you want to share, know if they want to reshare, specify an address, and then you type in your um, the draft of your email by selecting fields for those merge fields and then typing everything out as needed. And when you're done, like always, you're going to click next. Now in the next part, we are going to do job triggers. So this means if, if you're using a Google form, this is when you want to do this. So you're going to turn triggers on. You're going to say yes. And that means that every time someone fills out the form, this will automatically create. And then in my case, because I have it set up, send the emails of those certificates. If you don't want to, if you want to do it manually afterwards, you're not going to run these triggers. So I'm going to say yes. Now, the other option that you have is to run it on time. So not every, t the first one is run on form trigger, meaning when it's filled out. If you're like, yeah, I don't want to run on the form trigger, but I want to run it once a day so everyone gets it at the same time. You can say no to this one, but then yes to the bottom. Now, I tend to run it on the form trigger. And then I also say yes, regardless. And I say like every hour. What happens here is I say, okay, I'm going to run it every hour just in case one is missed. If one's missed, I don't want that to happen. Now, at this point, I'm, I'm done. That's it. Okay. I, I finished everything I need to do so I can run an edit and preview because at this point I'm going to hit save. There's no more next button. I'm going to save it. And if I had things already populated to this spreadsheet, I would hit the play button. I could also edit my job. I could preview the job, what it would look like. I can delete the job if I have multiple jobs and I don't want that one anymore, right? There's a lot that we can do in here. So as I've explained, right, that the preview, the edit, the view, et cetera. Whoops. Okay. So let's, let's try it out before we go. Let's try this out. I'm going to go into my folder. I am going to, or into my form rather, and I'm going to hit the little eyeball. That's the preview. And I'm going to fill this out. So name, this is like Casey Bell. Today's date that I'm filming. This is the 10th of August. What did you, today you rocked it at the station activities and helped your classmates with respect and patience. Okay, we like that. Good. And notice that I use that lowercase r because it's going to be filling out. I, I reminded myself there. It's going to say today you and then what I put. Um, and the email that I want to send this to is. And the parent email will be jen at shake up learning.com. So then I hit submit. Now look what happens over here on our spreadsheet. I'm going to close it down. All of a sudden, there's these new rows being created and it's saying, hey, we're starting this merge doc. And every time it's filled, it'll say this, it's starting it. And when it's done, boom, it tells you the ID. It gives you a link to the document. It gives you a link to the filled in document. It is awesome. It's successfully created. Now, if you ever have to rerun this, someone's like, oh, you spelt my name wrong. You're like, oh, shoot, sorry. You can come in, simply erase those four columns. So those those four columns and those that cells from that row, open Autocrat and click run again. And it will think, because all it does in order to know to run, if you have triggers on it, is it looks for any time that those four cells are blank in those rows. And then it knows, oh, these are blank. I've, I've got to run it. And so it runs it again for you. So that's how you can do that. Now, what does this look like? Well, let's head on over to my email here. And because I put my name as the backup, it should be here. And sure enough, there you go, from me, because it's sent from Jen, 
way to go. And it says, hey, Casey Bell, I saw what you did today. I'm proud of you, Mrs. Giffen. And when I click this, look what happens. Casey Bell, you did great today. You rocked it. And there it is. The date's there. Her name's there. What she did is there. She got it. Her parents got it. And it's beautiful. I've automated everything. So every time I see someone do something great, I can just type it up in that form. And these automatically go out to my students. Just one of many ways you can use Autocrat and you can automate what you do on the daily. So like I said at the beginning, tons of ways you can use this. Anytime you want to fill out a form and populate it to a doc, or some sort of certificate or or slide of some sort, Autocrat is absolutely the way to go. So I finished up my recording and realized I still had about 10, five minutes left um, to fit the the time frame that we were hoping to do for these. So I thought I'm going to add in a little something. This works if you have an iPhone. There is a way to do it with an Android. Unfortunately, I do not have um, an Android to demo it on, but it's basically the same. Let's say you want to create something for just in time observations in your class, right? You have some sort of form um, that you want to fill out. Um, like I said at the beginning, let's say incident reports for recess time or that I got you doing something great, like my certificates you just saw. You can easily make it so that you can access the form from your phone. So you don't need to worry about running back to class and getting onto some sort of computer. Well, how do you do this? The first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the form. Now I want you to go to the form that looks like this, the one that is fillable. And you'll know it's that if the end of the URL says view form, right? Just like it does up here, view form. Now, with this, I am going to send this form to myself. Now, you can also do this the other way. So I can copy this URL and go into my email and send it. Or in this one, I can hit send. So this is the editable one, not the one I can fill out, the one I edit. And I can say, I want to send this to Jen Giffen. Jen at Shake Up Learning. Awesome. And I'm going to send it there. Now you need to make sure that you can access that email on your phone, which I can. So I'm going to head down to my email. I'm going to open Gmail and we should see there. I sent myself, I've invited you to fill out this form. So I want to fill out the form and I say, okay, great. And I'm going to hit fill out form. And at this point, see, I'm on an iOS device. So it's opened in Chrome. I don't want that. I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to copy this URL just by tapping it and second tapping it and go to copy. I'm now going to open Safari. I'm going to open Safari and I'm going to double tap the URL bar in Safari and go paste and go. Boom, I get in. So you did great certificate. So I can fill this in again. I'm just going to send this one to myself. So Jen Giffen, I'm, you know, out on recess. I'm walking around class. I fill this out. No problem. Right. But at this point, you're like, okay, that's great. But I don't want to have to like go to that email every time. You don't have to watch what I can do instead. When I'm on this website, I'm just going to tap near the top so I can get all of the um, the menus on the top and the bottom. See the bottom in the middle, that little arrow coming out of a box, the share arrow or the share if you will. I'm going to tap that and I get a bunch of options. This is, of course, where you can airdrop it and send it to friends. and all. But if I scroll down a little bit, you'll notice one of the things I can do says add to home screen. So when I click add to home screen, you'll say, hey, you did great certificate. Do you want to add that? I'm going to click add in the top right corner. And now you'll notice on my screen there, I have a little Google Forms logo. It says you did great. And when I tap that, it's automatically going to open for me in Safari for me to fill out while I'm on the go. This works with any website. You can make a little icon, but I love doing this for certificates. Um, I love doing this for forms that I need to fill out on the fly that I don't want to have to wait until I get back to a computer. If you are doing this in on a um, on an Android device, there's a similar um, process. You're going to find on the top when you're in Chrome on the top right corner, there's three dots there and there's an option to add it to home screen on your Android phone in just the same way. So quick way to be able to, you know, automate and even streamline the process so you don't need to be at a computer. That's your bonus tip. So again, I'm Jen. I'm part of the Shake Up Learning Training team. We'd love for you to work with us. There's a link there on slide 56. And this was Automate with Autocrat. Thanks for joining me and I hope your startup at school has been great.